Hi, I'm Pavel Spechalski and today let's do some practical science because today let's do an experiment. Let's use an electric screwdriver and electric three-phase brushless motors, the same kind of the motors we use on our airplanes and drones and sometimes boats. And let's put the motor into the chuck of the uh, electric screwdriver and let's connect everything to an oscilloscope to see how the electricity is going through this device that the electric motor can act as the generator and how the voltage and the frequency of the signal on the face depends on the rotational speed of the motor. So let's do some science. What I have over here right now, it's kind of basic setup to see how the motor acts as the generator, because the brushless motors can act as a generator, but not only brushless, to be honest. And uh, also is a proof that it is indeed a three-phase AC motor terminated in the delta, delta scheme, but this is not really important right now. We have an oscilloscope, we have a motor, we have a... Bosch device that will act as the source of the rotation for the uh, for the motor and I have two probes. Now this is important. I can connect only and check two phases. I cannot connect between three phases because the grounds on my scope are not isolated and when I will try to connect the third phase then the grounds will make a short circuit and everything will go bonkers. To be able to see what's happening on the three phases without the access to the common ground and with this termination of the motor there is just no common ground. Um, I would have to have some kind of the super fancy devices that will isolate grounds between phases but I do not have it. So what we're gonna do today just right now. I'm gonna connect two grounds of the probes of the channels on the on the scope to one of the phases and then just connect the remaining phases into remaining connectors. So we will be able to see what's happening on two phases assuming that the third phase of the motor is the common ground between them. Um, so basically we will see two thirds of the, of the setup. Let me install the motor and let's start spinning. Bear in mind right now the, 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 the channels on the scope has very high resistance so it will be working like there is no load on the, on the motor, on the generator actually right now because of the high resistance so there will be absolutely no problem with spinning the motor and to be honest I will not even have to keep the base of the motor so So, I cannot speak and uh, keep the motor turning at the same time. Every time I'm increasing the rotation speed, you can see that both the amplitude is growing of the signal because the faster the motor rotates, then the more voltage it generates when acting against the uh, generator. And also, when the more voltage you supply to the motor when it's acting as a motor, the faster it rotates. It's just a dependency between the voltage and the rotation speed. And uh, the more voltage, the more rotation speed. But also, Observe how, how the wavelengths are getting uh, more condensed when the motor spins up because the commutation between phases happens faster and faster the, um, the motor rotates. So not only the voltage is growing but also the frequency of the signal between phases is growing. Let's see that one more time. You see, I hope that was... Okay, that should be visible right now and of course the motor disconnected itself from the chuck. Okay, now it's back again. So, the third thing I want to show you about the motor, let me only change the angle of the... 
of the camera and when we will see at the graph we will see that the signal from two phases are shifted. The phases, although the, the signal has more or less the same amplitude and the C frequency on all of the phases, however the the signal itself is shifted between phases. This is this is happening because well because this is how the motor is working. We have three phases, uh, three sets of the uh, coils of the windings connected right now in the delta scheme. That means if the motor has to pull the magnets around its uh, its radius, that means the moments when one and the first and the second and the third phase is energized or when it's just generating the uh, the signal has to be phase shifted. If we would be able to really connect and measure what's happening on the three phases with the common ground, but this is not what we have right now, not how this is terminated, we would see that the phases are shifted by 120 degrees. Here we don't see it because we are using the third phase as the common ground. So it's not really a perfect example, but with the different motor, for example, terminated in the Y scheme or just the measurement device with separate grounds, we would see that the phases are separated by 120 degrees. Here I would say it's rather closer to 60 or 30, but this is not really very important. So, one more time, let's put some... Let's enable the scope and let's put some... Yeah! The power. Oh, by the way, one more thing. The voltage, also with the help of the scope, you can measure the KV of the motor. This is possible. Um, we would also need to have the some kind of the rotation measurement, the tachometer measuring the rotation speed of the of the motor. Then, when I would just start spinning this thing and uh, enable cursor. Uh, so manual cursor vertical and if we okay channel 2 mod manual okay so then okay it will take a moment so here we know that the voltage generated on the face is 1.6.4 volts that means if you would know the rotation speed on them uh, of the motor, we would be able to divide one on, on the other and get the KV rating of the motor. But we do not have a tachometer right now, so maybe this is a topic for the another video? Hmm, why not? Okay, that's all for today. Until the next one. Bye-bye.